Crude prices are moving higher after OPEC Plus announced plans to extend production cuts until June. The group began cutting over 2 million barrels per day back in November. To break down what this means for investors, Neil Dingman, who is the truest securities managing director here with us. So ultimately here, how could we continue to see this have a broader impact on energy prices or is it largely baked in at this point? I think, good morning, thanks for having me. I think, number one, it is largely baked in. Um, I think we continue to count on not only the two million, it's really Saudi continue to step up. And I think it was interesting that is interesting is Saudi continue to push out their one million cut that Russia is going to exchange. And actually, right now, their cut continue, continue, uh, actually contains a large amount of uh, exports. It's actually going to be all production. And so I think just to see the confidence maybe extend out next time more than a couple of months, I think will give us a sense that this sort of support is here to stay for some time. Neil, does this put a floor in for oil prices? And, and what would that be? And when we talk about maybe some of that upside that we could see upward pressure as a result of this, how much higher could we see prices go? Yes, I, I think, number one, it, it, it does create a floor. I think you take this, couple this with... Uh, very, very limited domestic supply. I think that's what surprised folks last year when the when the U.S. supply grew over a million barrels this year. I'd be surprised if it grows over three or 400,000 barrels. So I think when you couple those two with rising demand, which appears we're likely going to have, uh, I would be surprised if we end the year anything less than the 90s. You know, the fact that we did see this extension, though, of the cuts, is that maybe a sign that demand isn't going to be where we initially thought it would be here through the second quarter? It, it, it definitely, the great, great point, for the first half of this year, I think you're absolutely right. I think we were hoping we would come out a little bit hotter on the demand side. I mean, both for the macro economy uh, and, and, and just you know the energy market, energy segment in general. But you're right. The ramp is starting. I, I can feel it, it even as I talk to my investors. The sediment is improving. But right now, I can still tell you, uh, coming in this weekend, the energy group was the most shorted group of the sectors out there. So sediment is improving. It's just taking longer, to your point, than we expected. Are we expecting this to, especially with the wave of consolidation that we've seen in the oil and gas sector over the last year, would you say that there's more to be expected at this juncture, or is much of the deal making behind us, and now it's focusing on driving and pulling out some of these synergies that companies have really been focused on with those consolidation efforts? I, I think it'll be active, not as active. We've seen some of the biggest deals in in in, in my time. I've done this a long time, um, but the the continued need for inventory for a lot of companies. I could list seven or eight companies that I think are going to have to add inventory this year. So I think there's going to be some activity, just not to the size and not as many as we've seen. Um, but it, but again, certainly $80 plus prices, almost where we are now, you think about it, my best companies have a break even all in around $40. They're making a ton of money here at anything close to 80.